Zero Accounting Software 2023 Enter Transaction Purchasing Equipment Using Bank Feeds. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Ugg slippers. I usually walk around my home in just my socks, but I wanted a high quality pair of slippers that didn't have a heel on them so I can slip them on easily give me a little bit more warmth than just my socks provide and which has a sole on them so I can deal with messes in the home such as spilled liquid or broken glass without getting my socks wet or my feet cut up and the Ugg slippers do a great job with that. I like the quality of the slippers. They feel like they're going to last a long time. They will probably outlast me so I recommend the Ugg slippers. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation the bank feed file duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time we're going to right click on the tab up top so we can duplicate it we're going to right click on that duplicated tab and duplicate it again let's go back to the tab to the middle and the accounting drop down we want to go into the balance sheet report one of the major financial statement reports then we'll tab to the right accounting drop down and this time the income statement or profit and loss the other major financial statement report i'm going to bring the range of the dates back to 2022 because that's the data input range i'm adding to the system so i'm going to hit the drop down 2022 january to December of 2022 and update our report. So we have just what we've entered from the bank feeds and the prior presentations tapping to the left. We have 2022 for the point in time on the balance sheet. That looks good. Let's tap to the left again. This time we want to be looking at our bank feeds. So we've uploaded the bank feeds in a prior presentation and the accounting drop down. If we go into our bank accounts, we have our bank feed information here. We'll hit the drop down up top. I'm gonna to go into the account transactions. And now we're basically in our bank feed type center. We're gonna go into the reconcile area as we have done in prior presentations. And this time uh, we wanna imagine a situation will be a, a little bit different in that we still have money going out, but instead of a normal kind of purchase that we're making for uh, expenses that happen periodically for fairly regularly and therefore lend themselves to bank rule creation quite readily we are now going to be looking at the purchase of equipment which is not something that happens on as regular a basis and therefore when we think about the rules and the account we set up we got to be a little bit more mindful of it all right so I'm just gonna pick a transaction and imagine that the transaction is coming from the bank feed. So I'm gonna go next here. Uh, I'm sorry, it's gonna imagine that it's coming for the purchase of, it's coming through the bank feeds for the purchase of equipment. It's hard to talk and look for the transaction here, but you know, I'll just be quiet and find my transaction. There's the one, this is the one I want. So I'm gonna pick uh, this one here. So we haven't been uh, entering any transactions on our end. We've waited till things clear the bank and now we're gonna be recording them on our side. So we're gonna basically do the same kind of thing we did last time, record the transaction and think about whether or not we wanna make a rule for it. Now let's just take a look, a quick look at the difference in a flowchart. This is a QuickBooks desktop homepage flowchart, but we are just using it to look at the flow 
of uh, transactions, which is basically the same for any kind of accounting system. We're looking at the outflow here. Now, remember when the money is going out of the business, we're purchasing usually services oftentimes and goods that are short term, things that are expenses when we actually uh, pay for them. Therefore, with the bank feeds, we can basically use a check form or a reduction of the bank type of form and that works perfect. That's what we looked at last time with the utility bills and, and the telephone bills. However, uh, if we're purchasing equipment, then you're basically gonna have to deviate from the standard accrual or, or cash kind of basis and do an accrual thing, putting the equipment on the books as an asset. Now you might say, why do I have to do that? Uh, I'll just expense the equipment when I purchase it. but. If you're in the United States, for example, just for taxes, the tax code is gonna force you to uh, deviate, even if you're on a cash basis from that cash basis to an accrual basis. And so, you, so you're gonna have to do that on certain types of things. So that's why equipment becomes more complicated. You can see the rationale for that most clearly with something like a building. If you paid $100,000 for a building, what would happen if you just expensed it when you compare January's performance on the income statement to February, January would look like a very bad month if you purchased a whole building and expensed it during that month, which isn't actually proper from an accrual standpoint because you're gonna be using the building in the future and therefore you should allocate the cost over the useful life. And so that's the same concept with other pieces of equipment that we're purchasing like a forklift or large, large equipment. So that means that when we're looking at this from our bank feed standpoint, the, the, the problem is we don't buy equipment all the time. It's not like a regular thing that we do such as we do do with inventory or something like that. If I buy inventory or I pay for my normal utility bill, that happens on a fairly routine basis and the vendors are probably just providing that particular thing such as inventory or uh, the utility, the electric or something like that. So it's easy to make a bank feed with. But with large pieces of equipment, we're usually deciding something that we need at this point in time that we haven't purchased for a long time. Because, and once we make the purchase, we're gonna be using it for a long time. And we might be purchasing it from the same place that we purchase, say, supplies from. So if we just set up our bank fees to say, whenever I purchase something from like a Home Depot and, or in our case, this series or whatever, then, then I want you to record it as an expense of supplies expense. We're gonna run into problems with that when we purchase large pieces of equipment, uh, we, we might accidentally record it as an expense when we're gonna need to in reality record it as an asset in order to comply with the tax code and whatnot for that particular purchase. So you might be able to think about kind of how can you set up your bank rules so there, there may be there's dollar limitations to help you to determine to at least think over whether or not something should be expensed or put on the books as an asset. Now, the other thing just to mention when you're purchasing large equipment, for example, uh, you might have a, a loan or part of it is financed. So you might be paying a down payment and finance uh, the rest of it. If that happens, then clearly the only thing that you're going to see pulling through from the bank feeds uh, if you're waiting till it goes through the bank feeds is going to be the dollar amount here. So uh, that came out of the checking account, not the financing portion. So you would have to then think about how you're going to be dealing with the financing portion. Now you, you can enter a transaction so that you can include uh, the loan that you're putting on the books, or you could try to stay on a cash based system, for example, and work with an accountant to help you to shore these things up at the end of the year. So if you paid any money for the equipment, as long as you make sure to put it down on the books as equipment, for example, and then tell your accountant at the end of the year and say, hey, look, I'm trying to stay in a cash-based system. There was a loan kind of transaction that took place here. I've just recorded the payments to the loan, to the loan account, but you need to shore up the transaction with regards to the purchase of the equipment and put the loan on the books for the proper amount and make the adjustment for short-term and long-term loan if you need to, as well as break out the interest. So, so again, if, 
if you're working with an accountant and you're trying to automate everything, you might be able to come up with a system where you basically can kind of automate everything when, even when you hit some of these more compli complicated areas, e if you're able to yourself or work with an accountant that knows the system that you're doing and can make the proper adjusting entries to shore up those things that make it difficult to automate the bank feeds. All right, so I'm gonna copy this and just say this is gonna be the name uh, and choose uh, what it's for. I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand this down here. Let's add the details so I can add a new account when I choose what it's for. So here it is, the date's gonna be good. Reference, we're not buying inventory, so no item. So this is good. Now on the account, we're gonna need to add an account and this time it's not gonna be an expense account. We're gonna put it on the books as an asset type of account. So I'm gonna add, so where the, the assets should be uh, up top, uh, I'll just say like one, two maybe. So I'll say add number, I'm trying to think of the code, uh, one, two, uh one zero let's see i think that will be open and then uh the account type is going to be a fixed asset so it's a fixed asset type of account i'm going to call it equipment equipment and that looks good that's all we need so i'll save that and that looks good now before i save now i'm going to uh look at the rule related to it so now that we have an account added hit the drop down and I'm going to create a rule for it. We need some rules around here. So any conditions match. And notice that if you're going to try to set up a condition where you want the dollar amount to be over a certain dollar amount in, uh, in order to, to make it a, a fixed asset, which is kind of an arbitrary thing, because really something that should be a fixed asset if you're gonna be using it for multiple periods into the future. However, there is kind of a materiality threshold where you're like, well, I'm if I bought a, a year's worth of paper clips, even though I'm gonna use, or five years worth of paper clips, I might just expense them because the dollar amount is small. So really, I, you might have a dollar amount kind of involved and say, hey, look, if I'm looking at a rule, if it's over a certain dollar amount, that's when you might put it in the books as a fixed asset as opposed to say supplies, for example. If that was the case, we might go to all conditions here and say, <clears throat> we're gonna look at not the payee, I'm gonna look at the any text field, just like we normally do. Any text field, if it contains, and I'm gonna put part of the name, that's all I need, all that other junk. Uh, if it just has that, I should be good. And I have another condition where maybe I put an amount. Uh, and if I say the amount is over, if it's greater than, let's say, uh, 1,000, then possibly we put it in the books as a fixed asset. If it's less than 1,000, maybe you put it in the books as supplies. And that can at least help you to, to see the dollar amount. Or for example, if you bought multiple things from this place, like if it was an Amazon or an Office Depot or a Home Depot, and most of the time what you purchase, you categorize as supplies, but sometimes you might be purchasing fixed assets from that same location. You might set a dollar amount for your normal transactions that are below, everything that's below $1,000 you put into supplies. And then you might leave that as your only rule and that rule then would not be applying if the amount was over $1,000 so that you can kind of give a, a more of a double check to make sure that you are categorizing uh, uh, the proper amounts for fixed assets. Or you can make two rules, right? You can make one rule saying it's the same vendor. If it's under $1,000, I just want you to put it to supplies. And if it's over $1,000, like we have it here, we want you to put it to equipment, right? That's the general idea. All right, uh, set the, the, the contact, uh, existing contact. I'm gonna say it's gonna be uh, that ser series. We set it up last time, I'll create it here. Hopefully I didn't put it in there twice. And then down below, we're gonna say the account is gonna be the uh, equipment account that we just set up, equipment. So there it is. And then I'll set this to reference checking account. So there we have it. So I'm gonna save that. 
and the rule should be applying now. So there's the rule <coughs> applying. My voice is going, this is not good. This is not good. Don't go voice. Don't go. So I'm going to add this. This will record the transaction and it will reconcile the transaction. So we'll go ahead and say, let's say, okay, and check it out. So if I go to the balance sheet, then we update the balance sheet. And if I go into the, the, I got a little thrown off there because uh, zero actually does the proper thing here, which some software doesn't do like this, like a, for example, uh, a QuickBooks doesn't normally do this. It pulled the checking account down here into the liability. Why? Because the checking account is overdrawn. So it's actually properly recorded now as a liability be because it's overdrawn because we haven't yet uh, put the beginning balance into the checking account. So I, so that's actually, again, another thing that, that Zero does uh, more properly, actually, than than some other softwares uh, like the major competitors like, uh, like uh, QuickBooks Online, for example. So if I go into this, there's the money out, the spend money form. Uh, if we go back on up, the other side did not go to the income statement, but rather, uh, hold on, I went too far back. I just want to go back to the balance sheet, the balance sheet. All right. The other side went into the equipment here. So it went into the equipment with the money out form, a fixed asset type of account. And if I go to the tab to the right, nothing happened to the income statement. So that's going to be, you know, the point of the fixed assets. Now, when we get into the fixed assets, just realize that when you, the next question is, well, when do I get an expense from it? And when I say get an expense, I'm often thinking from a tax standpoint, because if you're in the United States, you're gonna have to do your income taxes. And when you do that, you're gonna say, well, I want to, I would like to just expense the entire thing to lower my net income and pay less taxes, uh, but we have to do it in the form of depreciation. There might be accelerated depreciation for the tax software and whatnot, but that's the, that's the general idea. We have to depreciate it. So because of that, uh, in the United States, we often don't really have the subledgers within the accounting software to record the depreciation because we're going to have to give it to the accountant to do depreciation on a tax basis anyways, using other software such as tax software. Now, then the question is, do you want to keep your books on a tax depreciation schedule? Or do you want to have it on the book depreciation? You have to do tax depreciation for taxes, but you, it's not the best depreciation schedules to use for accounting purposes typically. So you could use the tax software then to run depreciation schedules on both a tax basis for taxes and a book basis for your books. So you want to kind of keep that system in mind because the subledger being in another software means that you want to set up your accounts here. If that's how you're doing it, you want to set up your accounts to line up to the account categories that will be on the sub ledger schedules created from the tax software. So that's what you want to keep in mind when you're adding your equipment account, your fixed assets, what, what are the asset classes? And you might want to talk to your accountant about this on the tax software so that I can match them and mirror them over here so that when I do my adjusting entries for depreciation, it will be as easy as possible. Also note that when you deal with your taxes, uh, what do you have to do with regards to the depreciation? You're going to have to give your tax preparer at least yearly in order to facilitate the depreciation schedules, the additions and subtractions to the, the fixed asset type of accounts. So you could give that to them with this like general ledger right here. You can give the tax preparer this at the end of the year. There shouldn't be too much going on because you don't purchase a lot of stuff and remove a lot of stuff during the year because equipment is, is stuff you don't purchase on all the time. You, you only purchase it periodically. Uh, however, you want to make sure that you give as much detail to your tax preparer as possible so that when they put it on their books, they they do a good job of being able to identify the exact pieces of equipment they're putting on their books. In other words, if this 2082 represented three forklifts or something like that, then you don't want your tax preparer putting it on the depreciation schedule as just equipment. 
That would be way too generic. You don't even want them to put it on the books as three forklifts, because that's too that's still too generic. And you want them to put it on the books as three separate forklifts and be able to identify those three forklifts with basically uh, an identification number if possible or some description so that you can actually locate them from the schedule to physical reality. Why is that the case? Well, it's, it won't be a problem if they shortcut when you first put the thing on the books for taxes. I can put 2082 and just call it generic equipment. Not a problem for this year. However, if I sell the forklift five years from now, it's going to cause a problem if the tax preparer put it on the book as one lump sum and just called it equipment. Because now I don't know where the forklift is that I sold and I can't figure out my depreciation schedule. So so make sure you're working with a tax preparer that is is doing a, a good job identifying the the actual pieces of equipment on the sub ledgers because it will make things easier in the future. All right, so that's the general idea. Let's open up a trial balance. I'm gonna right click on the tab to the right just to open up a trial balance. So we'll open up the trustee trial balance over here, go into the accounting dropdown, reports, reports, and then I'll type in trial balance to open up the trial balance just to see it being built kind of as we go. So we'll open that up and this is for December 2000. So now you just got the balance sheet on top of the income statement. There's our checking account. They still put the checking account up top for, for this one because I think it's ordered by the check numbers. Uh, even though it's a liability because it's overdrawn at this time. There's our equipment and then the income statement accounts of utilities and the telephone account, the debits and credits mean the double entry accounting system is in balance. When I convert that to an accounting equation, we can see on the balance sheet, the assets of 2082 uh, equal the liabilities and equity. That's really the same thing uh, that the, the debits and credits is the in balance is the same thing as saying the assets equal liabilities and the equity. How does the income statement fit into this? The income statement is part of equity. It's the breakout of equity of the 101.51 that you can see here, these two items in the trial balance, which is the income statement, income minus expenses, which we just have expenses of the 101.51.